Hi, thanks, Masa, for the introduction. So uh, as you already said, so this is going to be attribute-based encryption for circuits for multi-linear maps. This is joint work with Craig Gentry, Shai Halevi, Amit Sahai, and Brent Waters. OK, so let me start with the origins of attribute-based encryption. So going back to 84, Shamir introduced this notion of identity-based encryption. And the idea there is that we're not encrypting, uh, unlike public key cryptography, just to some specific public keys, but to identities of people. So if someone has, I can uh, encrypt to the name of a person, and then he can decrypt based on that. It was finally re realized by Boney and Franklin in 2001. Generalizing this notion, uh, we have this notion of attribute-based en uh, encryption. Uh, and, and then in this notion, uh, you don't encrypt now to, to identities, but you encrypt to policies. So what I mean by that is that we're going to have a setup authority. He generates a, a master secret key along with the public key. It publishes the public key so everybody has access to it. It uses the master secret key to publish specific secret keys for the users in the system. So for example, let's say we have a, a crypto program committee member. Then he gets a secret key from the, 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 that the key authority gives to him. We can have another key for a, a member of the a PC member of the Eurocrypt committee. At this point, the, the key authority goes away, and it has no role to play. And let's say a user comes along, and he wants to encrypt a message that satisfies this policy. So he wants to encrypt a message such that anybody on the board of IACR can decrypt it, or a PC member of crypto can decrypt it. So then, uh, and then he generates a ciphertext with this policy and goes again. OK, so now let's say we have a, a program committee member for crypto. He would like to decrypt this message, and he, he tries to decrypt using a secret key. He satisfies the policy, so he should be able to decrypt it. But on the other hand, if we have a, a malicious Eurocrypt PC member who actually tries to decrypt this, this message, then since he doesn't satisfy the policy, we don't want him to be able to decrypt it. Okay? So uh, the notion that I just described to you is the, the, called the ciphertext policy-based attribute-based encryption. Because the policy or the circuit as to who can decrypt is embedded as part of the ciphertext. And the keys are associated with attributes. We could similarly define the key policy uh, based attribute based key policy attribute based encryption scheme, where the policy is a part of the secret key and the attribute go, attributes go along with uh, ciphertext. Invoking uh, uh, universal circuits, it, it's not hard to see that the, the uh, both the notions are equal, and I'm going to restrict myself to the key policy uh, attribute-based encryption for the, the purpose of the talk. There are other talks in the, the session, and the, in the next session, which talk about the notion of functional encryption. This is a weaker notion and a specialized notion uh, in this class. OK, so what's the key problem that comes across when we're trying to construct uh, attribute-based encryption? So the key problem is that we have to resist collusion attacks. So, I'll give a, a very simple example, a very naive construction which highlights this. Uh, so let's say I want to encrypt the message says that a party that has two attributes, A and B, can decrypt. Okay, and, and so both these attributes must be present in this party. Consider a simple scheme which I generate as follows. The public key consists of two independently generated public keys for a public key encryption scheme. And I'm going to encrypt the message. I'm going to secret share the message. So I'll pick a random string R, encrypt it under the public key PKA. And uh, this, the M, X, or R encrypted under the public key PKB. Now, if we have a user, Sarah, with the attribute A, we could give it the secret key SK, and it could decrypt R. And we could give another user, Kevin, with attribute uh, B, the secret key SKB, and he can figure out M, X, or R. But the point is, if they were to come together, then they can figure out M. So individually, they couldn't have figured it out but together they can. So it's a very simple example, but already highlights that collusion attacks can be problematic. Okay. So there's been a lot of work in this, this area. I haven't uh, listed all the papers. But the, the key point is that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the level of functionality to which we can, uh, the, the expressiveness of the functionality which we can capture is actually limited to Boolean formulas. And the limitation seems to be bilinear maps. So I'm going to go about it as I'm going to tell you, give you the construction for formulas from bilinear maps. And I'll tell you what goes wrong if you were to just use those constructions directly. And actually, extending those constructions, uh, uh, one can get uh, a construction for circuits. So it's a, it's a very direct analog. So I'll first give the construction for formulas. 
So let me recall what bilinear ma maps are. Everybody knows, but just to set notation. So they have, we have groups G and GT, both of prime order P, with generator G for the group G. And we have this additional nice bi uh, bilinear map that maps two elements of the group G. So let's say G to the A and G to the B. And you get E, G, comma, G to the AB. So I'll call it egg sometimes. So I get egg to the AB. And the, the high level idea is that you get the single multiplication. And this is what allows for uh, getting collision resistance. So even if two people come together, they can't pool their attributes. Okay. So I'm going to describe the scheme, as I said, for formulas. It's, it's very simple. So you choose a, a random value alpha. And my public key is going to look like G. That's just the generator for the group egg to the alpha, the random value alpha that I chose, and a, a set of n generators. So if there are n attributes in the system, or the, the universe of attributes has, has size n, then I'm going to generate n random generators for the group. And this is all what my public key is going to look like. So public key for the circuit scheme is going to be exactly the same with one minor change. So uh, that's it. And the, the master secret key just consists of g to the alpha. How am I going to encrypt? So this is my public key. If I want to encrypt a message m under some attribute set s, I just pick a random value s and exponentiate everything in the public key with s, except only, so the, the, this, these generators correspond to the, the set of attributes. I choose the ones which are in the attribute set for which I want to encrypt, and I exponentiate only those ones with s. So I, I, I exponentiate g to the s, I get g to the s, I exponentiate egg to alpha to the s. I get egg to the alpha s and multiply with m because this is going to be a sort of a hiding parameter. And I just exponentiate the, the attribute the parameters here. Okay. The key generation is going to be also uh, pretty simple. The idea is, so if you have an OR gate in your formula, then you're happy if either of the wires or the input wires is, is one. So you're going to somehow secret share this alpha in both parts, so you'll say, I'll, I'll put alpha here and alpha here. And if you get either of the two, I'm happy. And if there is an AND gate, you want both inputs to be, to, to, be, uh, to be valid, or both inputs to value it to one for this gate. So I'll secret share the value alpha into two parts. Okay. So what I'm going to actually give out is for each leaf node in this formula, an expression that consists of these secret shared values with some re-randomization. Okay, so this re-randomization is done to prevent, let's say, collusion attacks and, 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 and uh. Okay, so how does decryption work? For decryption, so remember that S was the parameter that was selected for the generation of the, the ciphertext. So I have uh, HX to the S, which is uh, corresponding to the attributes that are in the, the ciphertext, and G to the S is a parameter for the ciphertext. I pair these with the key components in the, the leaf nodes that I just described here. So you pick the ones which, for, the, for which you have the ciphertext components. So you have ciphertext components for some of them, and you, you pair them. As you see, when you pair them together, what you're getting is egg to the lambda x to the s. So in this figure, you had these uh, lambda x values which were shared, and you're getting egg to the lambda x values. So what's happening is that I have brought together the ciphertext randomness that was this s part that was used with the key shares lambda x. And, and I used up pairing in this process. So what you're going to do is, I, I, at secret sheet these values, you can now put them together and ultimately reach alpha, and you can evaluate egg to the alpha s from this. And this was exactly uh, my hiding parameter work in this case. Okay. Okay. okay, so just the, the same thing I said, if you want to pool together, if you, uh, uh, the lambda x in this case is s, then you get egg to the SR, and in this, uh, this is egg to the S alpha minus R. If you put them at the AND gate, you multiply them, you get a, a EGG to the alpha S. Once this wire is satisfied, you don't really care about this category because it's an R gate. You just go above and you have the decryption. So the, the scheme for formulas is, 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 is pretty simple. What's the problem and if you're trying to realize the scheme for circuits? Well, the problem is that uh, uh, as I'll tell uh, as we go forward, but one thing to keep in mind is, uh, which is the main technical reason, is that formulas are, 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 are categories of circuits with fan out one. So this is the, 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 as we go to circuits from formulas, having a larger fan out is going to be the problem. Okay, so what's the problem? Let's see. So the problem actually happens with OR gates. The problem is 
that once you have calculated, we calculated some components for the inputs, the, the shares of alpha for this R gate, and we moved forward up and used this value. Now the problem is that you could actually go down and use the same value here. So this kind of a backtracking attack is something uh, which goes wrong with the OR gate. In case of formulas, it's of no consequence because there's, even if you go back, it doesn't affect anything in the system because the, every gate has a fan out of one. So you're not using this value anywhere else. But it's really bad for circuits because you could then, if you go down, this wire was not really satisfied, this constraint was not really satisfied, but I'm somehow magically able to come up with this secret share, which can, I can then pump across into some other gate and, and, and then put it forward and, and uh, uh, realize what I want. Okay. So we want the circuit evaluation to be a one-way street, and this is, this is the problem. Okay. Well, how are we going to do it? We're going to use the multilinear maps. Uh, uh, the original construction was by Boney and Silverberg in Rothblum, and, and we're going to use the candidates uh, from a recent result. Of, uh, a recent result. And the idea is, it's just like uh, the setting of bilinear maps, but we now have a sequence of k groups, g1 to gk, all of prime order p with generators g1 to gk respectively. Okay? Now instead of just having this one bilinear map that we had, uh, we're going to have a family of maps which allow you to pair gi to the a and gj to the b, which are from element, uh, groups gi and group, group gi and group gj, and you get an element in group gi plus j, specifically the element gi plus j to the ab. Okay? And you can keep doing it as long as i plus j is less than k. Okay. So the actual encodings that we have are actually noisy and, and there are a lot of problems when, when you're working with them. For the purposes of this talk, I'm just going to restrict with like this clean and uh, nice looking multilinear maps. The construction also works with uh, the degraded encodings. For details, you can look at the papers. Okay, so the idea is going to be to use pairing to move forward. So the problem was that once you moved forward in an R gate, you could come down because uh, the same value could be used down at the lower level. But now we're going to have this, since we have multilinear maps, we're going to have this, this, this requirement that circuits at level i use group level i plus one. So once you move a, at a level ahead, you can't come down. So you move forward, and there's going to be uh, the technique of shifting that we have, which will allow, we'll see how it works. One technical uh, thing to keep in mind is that we, I'll give the construction for monotonic circuits. When you have a, a construction for monotonic circuit, you can realize it for any general circuit. So uh, by monotonic circuit, I mean a circuit with only AND and OR gates. If you have a general circuit, you can push all the NOR gates to the, the bottom and do some uh, technical stuff, and it works out. So I'll, I'll restrict to the setting. So uh, the, the public parameters are going to be exactly like the, 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 the scheme for bilinear setting or the, the scheme for formulas. The only difference is instead of having egg to the alpha or the, the, the G2 to the alpha that was there in the bilinear setting, I'm going to have the, this value at the highest level. Again, H1 to Hn are the uh, parameters corresponding to the attribute. Encryption is also identical. So I'm just going to pick a random value S, and I'm going to exponentiate everything in the public key with S. But from H1 to Hn, I'm, I'm going to choose the values which are in my attribute set. I pick these ones, I exponentiate them to S, I exponentiate G to S, and I exponentiate GK to alpha to S and multiply with them. So this is the hiding parameter. So this is almost the same as encryption before. Key, key, key generation is going to be slightly different. I want, I want you to keep two things in mind. So one is, for, so I'm going to have a circuit. I want to generate a secret key for this circuit. For each wire in this circuit, I will sample a random value RW, which will correspond to that specific wire. And uh, when decrypting, when, I try, when the, someone tries to decrypt it, his goal is going to be able to compute the, the value g to the rws for every wire in the system that evaluates to one. So if a wire in the system evaluates to one, then he wants to be able to compute this. I'm, 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 I have a star here. This is going to represent the level you are at. If you're at a higher level in the circuit, then your level of uh, the group you are in is going to be higher. And the security property roughly is going to be that you can compute this value for only those wires which are actually one. Okay. okay. I'm going to tell how decryption works, but uh, think of a OR a, a gate. An OR gate has two input wires, A and B, and the, uh, let's say the output wire is W, so 
RW will be the component for the output wire, and RA and RB are for the input wire. For this, I'm going to give in the secret key, I'm going to choose AW and BW randomly, and I'm going to give this thing. Okay. I'm going to tell how it works in a second, but uh, it's good to compare the two things, what's going on. So if you look at the OR gate, I have a G to the RW component, and my goal is to compute G to the RWS. Recall that S was the thing that I used in generation of the ciphertext. It was what, was ex what I had exponentiated. If I pair this value with the S, I get something G to the RWS minus something else. So this is like a shift. I need to get rid of it, but it's there. And it's an R gate, and if you have this shift, so it looks like AWRAS, or you could also pair this thing with G to the S, and you will have G to the RWS minus BWRBS. So it's an R gate. If I have this shifted expression for either of the two, I can get rid of it and get the value that I want. Similarly, for the AND gate, uh, I could compare this thing with S, but now have two shifts. I need to get rid of both of them. So I need to have both incoming wires be one. Okay. So this is similar to prior AB. How it actually works, it's, it's, it, I'm going to just tell in the next slide. And the output wire RW is just going to be alpha, because at the last level, we just want GK to the alpha S. Okay. So uh, the, the, the decryption is going to be, so I, I have GJ for an R get GJ to the RSA. So I told you that for a wire, if it is one, I need to have this value. So you can think of inductively at any step in the, the, the evaluation, if I have this value for one of the input wires, that means this wire is one. I want to be able to compute this, the, the appropriate value for the output wire. Well, I just pair G to the SRA with AW. This was a part of the secret key. I get GJ plus one SRA, which is exactly the shift. Okay, so uh, the second part of the secret key was, was GJ to the RW minus AWRA. If I pair this value, I get the, this, uh, the entire thing multiplied in the exponent. And this note that these two things are exactly the same. So if I uh, do a, a simple multiplication, I get the value at the output. So the same thing is going to be for the AND gate, but now you would have to do one more pairing and do two multiplications for two shifts. Okay? So now one thing to observe is I started at the jth level, but I ended up at the J plus first level. So this makes backtracking hard, which was the problem in the previous setting. So this is what is actually allowing us to, to, to have the thing go through. OK, summarizing the result, we get attribute-based encryption for any circuit. The circuit depth is fixed at setup time. So at the time when the setup parameter is fixed, we fix a, a particular depth of circuits, which are going to be realized. And the cipher text size grows with the, uh, with the maximum depth that is fixed. The proof relies on k multilinear assumption. It's a, uh, a natural analog of decisional bilinear Diffie-Hellman assumption. There's an exciting concurrent work by Gorbunov, Vekuntanathan, and V. And the, the really nice feature about this work is that they don't rely on, on multilinear maps, which, which, rely on, which themselves rely on cooked up assumptions for now. And uh, uh, the nice feature is they rely on learning with errors, which, which is uh, a more well-studied assumption. So uh, that's really nice. Thank you.